are kind of building this industry and making sure that it has a strong foundation. And I'm curious to hear from you, Christian, what does that look like from a technological development perspective? Mm. So how are we thinking in industry maturity to that? Offshore wind is going to be one of the main driving forces in the green transition. So, so uh, we come from what I would call a little bit of a niche industry, also within the company. It's, it's been a smaller business segment. Now it's our main growth engine. And of course, that's a completely different challenge from, from what we've been used to. Uh, building on your, on your point, uh, which is what we are seeing is also a shift in the industry. Uh, it's not mm, perhaps the size of the turbine or the fact of the new platform, but definitely the customer are demanding or we are shifting into becoming a really uh, um, a main uh, energy source, right? Uh, generation source. So it's, it's important that all the planning and everything run smoothly. So I think we are upping up the game quite a bit as an industry. And uh, I, I feel a lot of uh, pride in a sense, but also responsibility that comes with it um, and being accountable for what we delivered. Um, I'm curious to, to ask you, Emra, could you tell us uh, a little bit more around simulations? So actually, it's the, one of the key points is that uh, we uh, stress the complexity of our operations across our value chain. Simulations does not make things simple, but it actually helps us a lot to handle this complexity. And when unexpected things happen, it's mo they mostly uh, start a chain of reactions across value chain. It impacts everything. The simulations allows us to immediately realize this. And it's not that there is a challenge or a problem. It's like how early we find it out. If it's early enough, then it's not a problem anymore. We actually use it on a, a much larger scale as well, simulating uh, full construction sites, pre-assembly sites, but also looking at how does everything connect across the value chain. So it's, um, there's a lot of potential in this, there's, there's no doubt. Yeah. Maybe if I can add, uh, I think one clear example, and, and here we're talking about offshore, so we need to add the, the topic of logistics, right? Mm -hmm. And actually doing things offshore. Um, so some of the vessels that needs to be built uh, will, will be of such a scale that, and such an investment uh, that it requires a lot of considerations before you press that green button and saying, yes, we're ready. And of course, if you have an ever scaling technology and larger components, uh, everyone will be sitting and waiting when, when comes the time of that stability and calmness because no one wants to sink in hundreds of millions of euros into building a vessel that two, three years down the line will be too small. Uh, so I think it's also very important to give that stability to the other supply chain partners, right? So that they can also make the right decisions and investments. And so from a commercial perspective, I would say risk is a great thing to have um, as long as you understand it and deal with it correctly. So how does what Christian is doing help you in your journey to try to establish a, mat a mature value chain behind this? Yeah, I think uh, one of the questions is what is a mature value chain, right? And I think, uh, you know, I think a mature value, value chain is, I would probably define it as being uh, predictable. The, the faster we move to a more mature value chain, you know, we can work a lot more in a, in a systematic way, right? So I think that's, that's, I think a mature value chain is also a proactive value chain that uh, detects risks early, that uh, detects problems early, that detects challenges early. Just to, to imagine, 400 uh, it's just say 400 turbines, that's 1200 blades. So predictable here for us in manufacturing, that will be that we're able to do the repetitions. That is that, is that we don't constantly see the need to, to change. And that's where we actually see a great advantage in the turbine we have today and uh, the development tools that we actually have used on onshore now being propagated over to offshore. From our simulation perspective, you know, when we start modeling the future projects, and it, it actually pretty much seems to me that every time we remodel, we're actually delivering a value chain to our customers. And it's, of course, that's why even though product is huge and complex, the value chain is much more complex than that and super dynamic environment. We are trying to build the highest skyscraper in a nonstop shifting ground. And we were doing this actually, this product, you know, technology change for many years uh, so far and I, when I was talking with the guys and especially in production and asking their change they were mostly saying that the problem is not actually optimizing our you know assemblies or manufacturing the problem is that non-stop uh, changing it and re-optimizing it that was the, that was the challenge that's why I believe that uh, this slowing down could bring really huge benefit. We, we often forget to reflect on this but what we're really doing here is accelerating an energy transition 
sometimes it, it feels a little bit counterintuitive to, to talk about being predictable when we're talking about driving decarbonization and, and uh, meeting net zero targets, because often we want to use words like innovation and new technology and exciting new things. But by being predictable and driving that industry maturity, we really are creating the space for our industry to be able to grow around this and get as stable as it possibly can to drive that energy transition forward.